I live in Ludington apartment 51B. Well, I was just, I was in my apartment, I was like watching some uh, Netflix, I think uh, I was watching like Umbrella Academy or some shit, and then I heard a scream outside, I was like, what? And I looked, I lifted up my window, because my window's, my room's over the alleyway, so I lifted up the window, I put my head out, and then there was this girl laying on the floor, and there's a guy over her with a, with a knife, I think, or like something that looked like a knife, and there was like some blood on the floor, I was like, oh shit. So I pulled my phone out, I called the police, and I was like, there is kidnapping or something in progress, you guys need to come down here and check it out, and they came down. Uh, after I called the police, I shouted out the window, and the guy just he looked up, ran off, and then I, I, after that I knew it was safe to go down. So I went down, checked on her, waited with her until the ambulance came, um, and then they just took her away to hospital. I don't know where she is now, I don't know what's going on with her. Um, I was walking to go meet my friends and I was running a bit late so I took the shortcut through this alleyway but it was getting quite dark and then next thing I know I just feel a strong grip around my neck and I look down and it's just like a pool of blood and from there on I just don't have any memory of what happened after. I just remember waking up in the hospital. I've been told there was a man that did actually find me by his apartment and I'm very grateful for the man that found me that night because if he didn't I probably wouldn't be here. I had to go in for an emergency open abdominal surgery. I think that lasted around 9 hours. Um, I've got around 7 stab wounds in my abdomen. After being in the hospital for a couple of days I saw on BBC News about this girl. I think her name was Amy. Um, unfortunately, she didn't make it. After seeing the man on the news talk about the murder, I thought it was quite coincidental, considering it was in quite a similar time frame to my incident. Yeah, I walked over to the bush and I saw a girl lying there, about my age. Yeah, I walked over and I saw the feet. I was shocked. And then I called the police. I thought I needed to talk to somebody. So I contacted the police. The police found the same person's DNA on each of the victim's bodies. So during this conversation, they said that they also have suspicions that it was linked to my case as well. Fortunately, the police could gather some CCTV footage of both the apartment where I was stabbed. Um, but it did take the police quite a long time to find a matching face for the face recognition because it wasn't a homicide. Within this time, two other women lost their lives because of this man, Milton O'Reilly. I wonder if those two girls would still be here today. I'm sorry. Can you cut the cameras? I just don't know what to say. The police called me and uh, they said that young girl's body had been found in the lake and I had to go and go and identify her. She's such a lovely girl. Only 17. She had everything to live for. But it's three years now since my beautiful girl was found. And I still feel just as angry now as I did the day she went. But I wouldn't want anybody to ever have to go through that. To go through what I did three years ago. And every day I, I really it. I cannot show any forgiveness for that monster, for the crimes he committed. Obviously, the family had been completely devastated. We, we were just uh, sitting waiting for things to happen really and uh, waiting for the next phone call and the next phone call and uh, the police kept us informed all the time of uh, uh, how proceedings were going and we, we knew the net was closing eventually um, we got a phone call to say that, uh, that he had been apprehended. It's, more comforting to know that he is behind bars but our lives will never be the same again and uh, we're just going to have to learn to live with that.